You will see the effect that even seemingly minor interactions have on the structure of a mission. Carry the logic one step up, and it shouldn't be hard for you to grasp. You like working here? My responsibilities don't account for that, nor should they. You know, I actually thought you were the janitor when I arrived. That would either be an insult or an excellent deduction. I'm guessing the former. I was actually just trying to make conversation. But why would that be an excellent deduction? Because, Agent, Alpha Protocol can only maintain plausible deniability as long as no one knows we exist. That means continually cleaning and scouring data, masking our communication lines, and protecting our global positioning. I understand. That must be a full-time task, and an important one. Agreed. Even Westridge would say I hold the most important post in the facility. So, in short, yes. I clean up after others, and if necessary, I'm the one tasked with shutting this program down. Shutting it down? Turning off the lights, putting up the chairs, locking the door. What does that mean, exactly? This place cannot be found. If Alpha Protocol is compromised, any evidence of the program must be deleted. But what happens to the... I mean, is there an escape route, or... what happens? What do you mean, Agent? Be specific. I dislike dancing around an issue if one exists. What happens to the program? Seems like a waste of resources. You are correct. If ended, it starts again under a different name, with a new agenda. You sound like you've done this before. If I have, it's classified. Or perhaps I'm joking. Are we done here, Agent? I think I've answered all your questions. Some of them, yeah. The others can wait. does not end here. This target is not the last. With our will You guys must have spent a fortune on the TVs in this place. You all done? You tell me. Now you're learning. I have to admit I was worried whether we'd be able to keep you here after you woke up in medical. You gave our staff a run for its money. I gave it my best and so did they. Fair enough. It'll be a good excuse to up the morning drills around here. Looks like you did well on the tech portion of the test. Very well. Past Darcy's bitching, there's some real compliments in here if you look at the numbers. Mina's report on your weapon skill was impressive. In fact, I think you outperformed many other guards, and it's your first day. She's a good teacher. She is, and she has a good eye for potential. I'll let her know your opinion. And here's a surprise, a positive evaluation from Parker. On the number side as usual, but he actually took the time to write a sentence. He did? Uh, what was the sentence? You may have been right about this one, Westridge. For Parker, that's high praise. Assuming you don't let us down, Mike. Looks like that's it for the physical evaluation. Now for the hard part. Tell me why you're here. Not everyone gets chosen for this line of work, but you volunteered. Usually, we have to ask. I want to serve my country. And you think by being assigned here is the best way to do that? Give me a mission and I'll prove it. What makes you think you're ready? Because I tell you, we get a lot of recruits in here, and you're not convincing me. I get an opinion? Or is that a rhetorical question? All right, let me be more specific. Beyond the guns, tech, and sneaking around in the dark, there's one last part of this job that nobody else here quite gets. I'm listening. Good, because listening is a large part of it. The way you talk to people, your attitude. That's what we're going to discuss now. I'm not sure I understand. Is there something wrong with how I deal with people? No, believe it or not, you're not here because you're a people person. You're here because your psych profile says you're skilled at manipulating others. Was that a compliment? You'll see. The way you project yourself definitely affects what people think of you, and your reputation with them. And if I want to impress them? You don't always want to or need to. Having a good or bad rep with someone can actually gain you different benefits. Sometimes you want to piss someone off so they can't think straight. 
are the times you want to build a strong rapport with someone and talk your way out of a bad situation. All depends on your objective. This goes for your handlers as well. We're going to be sending you into a lot of dangerous places, and your only backup is going to be who you're talking to on your headset. How you treat them is going to have an effect on the success of your mission. So if I piss them off, I'm screwed? No. A handler that likes you too much and puts emotions before the mission can be just as dangerous as one who resents you. This is a long way of telling me that I should just act the way I want? And if I compromise an asset in the field by choosing the wrong path? No, again, there are no bad choices, just results. Over time, folks may hear about you and your attitude before they meet you. They may have a preconceived notion of how you're going to treat them, which can affect their reaction. Well, maybe they should take the time to know the real me. If only. Time's something no one seems to be able to spare, especially during a conversation. Although that can be a plus. If I need a breather to assess the situation, right? The clock doesn't stop when you're speaking to someone. So if you need to get your second win before a fight, making small talk can buy you time. But if I'm running on adrenaline, won't chatting take me off my guard? It can. So if you need to get to the point, act instead of fight. For example, if you don't think I have any more to teach you, then you could just say, I'm done with this. I wouldn't think any less of you. You seem to have the basics down. And if they're a target, why talk to them at all? Sometimes it is better if you shoot first. Still approaching someone to talk to them can allow you to get the drop on them if you get close enough to strike. Use it if you have to, if the conversation isn't going your way. Assuming there's even a way you want the conversation to go. So how do I know how someone wants to be treated? At least, enough to cooperate. If that's what you want to do, pay attention to the clues in your environment. Sometimes people will have advice, and intel can help. But there's another way. Read much? Well, I read the recruiting pamphlet. Got me this far. There's a host of information out there through dossiers, email, and other documents that represent total research others have collected on a target, organization, or operation. And what does that get me, exactly? Sometimes you'll spot obvious triggers. People who don't respond well to smart asses like me. Others who respect loyalty, duty, a professional approach. Others who don't have time for bullshit and like it when you get to the point. But dossiers just don't contain psych information. They'll usually have combat information on your target as well. What side they favor, any past injuries, common weapons or tactics they use. Some of it blunt, some of it subtle. But if push comes to shove, it can give you an edge in combat. The more you've done your homework, the more vulnerable they'll be. Makes sense to me. I'd rather get a firefight over with as quickly as possible. Amen to that. Our records are complete, so use them when you have downtime. You have dossiers on everyone here? Yep, if you can dig them up. You might learn a few things. Sometimes reading a dossier will give you more options when dealing with others. A few facts to bring up, to shake secrets loose. What about you? You should already know what makes me happy, Mike. And what pisses me off. How do I know when I have the go-ahead to start accessing files? After meeting a target or hearing their name referenced by someone else, you should have a target ID. Then hop onto the database and start doing your homework. You can usually unlock their basic information at that point. Let's start with a simple one. al Samad. That should be familiar to you. The terrorist group. Yes, you can research groups as well as people. It doesn't carry the same benefits, but it can provide useful intel in the field. Talking to people about others is a good way to help gain dossier information. Sometimes people will have information on someone that can unlock a brand new thread in your computer search. Okay, so I've suffered through your interrogation. and know how to give one if need be. Am I ready or not? We'll see. Meet me in the command center, and I can give you a proper mission briefing. Good, because I'm sick of this room. Trust me, Mike. If it was up to me, you'd never see this interrogation cell again. Recognize him? That's Sheikh Ali Shaheed, the voice of Al Samad. They say he was responsible for shooting down that airliner in the Middle East. Yeah, he got his hands on some prototype Halbeck technology. A missile with a multi-stage targeting system called Jacob's Ladder. That airliner was his first target. But how did Shaheed get his hands on that missile? Missiles. He's got more. He stole them from Halbeck and we need them back before he gets any more trigger happy. 
Then we want you to kill him. About time I'm getting tired of this place. All right, then. Pack your gear. You're heading to Saudi Arabia. Not coming with me? I'll be there in spirit. And on video and radio when needed, Agent. And I just got here. Oh, well. I'm gonna miss this place. I doubt it. I'll contact you when you reach Saudi Arabia.